Precision medicine is based on the idea that strategies for preventing and treating certain conditions may work for some people but may not work for others, and therefore it's important to match the right person with the right treatment. Precision medicine is not new. For example, doctors have been matching blood types of blood donors to transfusion recipients for over a century. But now, technological advances in hematology and other fields are revolutionizing the way we receive care. And many of these advances have been made possible by research supported by the National Institutes of Health, the nation's largest funder of biomedical research. NIH funding supports scientists seeking to better understand human genes and the impact that unique changes to these genes could have on the onset or treatment of a specific disease. Because of this work, we know that diseases like cancer have unique genetic signatures. We can apply targeted treatments based on the genetic makeup of the disease. No longer is treating cancer a one-size-fits-all approach different treatments can target different mutations in the disease. We're at the point now where we can start to sequence patients at the time of diagnosis, which we'd not previously been able to do, and immediately identify particular patients or particular types of leukaemia for which we strongly believe there's a, an available targeted agent or, or a new therapeutic approach that can be carefully matched to an individual patient. Immunotherapy is another exciting advancement in precision medicine. It involves boosting a patient's own immune system to fight disease. We're using your own immune system to fight the cancer or to fight a disease that you already have. So we're harnessing what evolution already gave you. In contrast to chemotherapy, where drugs are used to kill tumor cells, immunotherapy utilizes the natural or more existent uh, immune system to target and kill tumor cells. One form of treatment involves removing a type of white blood cell, the T lymphocyte, from the patient and then genetically altering it to recognize and fight the patient's cancer cells. The T cells are then transfused back into the patient. You can actually apply this very effective therapy to a wide range of the patients, even from the young, from the very old, who otherwise previously had no treatment options. Precision medicine can also help prevent disease such as venous thromboembolism, also known as blood clots in the veins. Blood clots are more likely to occur in people with more sedentary lifestyles, those taking certain medications, or people who have a serious illness. But hematologists now know that some people have alterations in their DNA that put them at even higher risk for VTE. Because of this knowledge, physicians can now treat blood clots based on each person's risk profile or potentially prevent blood clots altogether. Most of what we know about the risk factors for venous thrombosis, genetic risk factors, comes from studies that were done in large European populations. And actually, our knowledge of um, uh, mechanisms in African Americans is quite lacking right now. We also know that Asian Americans are very protected from venous thrombosis, so what is that about? It's a leading cause of death and disability worldwide, and yet it's really not recognized, and so there's a lot to be explored here, and there's a lot to be solved here. For the progress and success of precision medicine to continue, NIH must be able to fund innovative research. The NIH is still the mainstay of funding for all the research, not just in my lab, but for all investigators. Without NIH funding, there would be no research. And we have all these incredible tools that we can use by molecularly and you know, immunological testing that we can do. Um, but you know, these tools, if we can't use them where there's no funding to make it uh, allow us, for us to do those research is useless. Now is the time to invest in the National Institutes of Health to launch the field into the next generation of care for hematologic conditions.